do you overcome a devastating loss? What do we do with grief? Let's talk about that. Hi, I'm Josh. Welcome to Honestly Radio. I will never forget the day we had to say goodbye to our first little baby that we cared for while serving as foster parents. There was full-fledged sobbing and praying as I said goodbye to our little man, as we called him, for the very last time. It was devastatingly hard. It felt like we were losing a loved one, because in a way, we were. This child that we had cared for in the hospital, nursed back to health, and bonded with for nearly a year, we were now being told to let go of him and hope that he would have a great life, even if it meant that we wouldn't be part of it. The room that had served as his nursery was closed off. We shut that door and looked for any excuse to avoid stepping inside. It sat empty as we wrestled with our grief. It was a process. Grief always is. A measured response to loss that allows us to move forward after part of us is broken. The good news is this. We worship a God who wants to bring us through that process, restore us, and bless us to allow us to live and dream again. Also, we face an enemy who wants to make grief and loss our identity instead of Christ. And that's a very real threat, to become so consumed by our brokenness that it becomes who we are instead of what happened to us. The lie of the enemy is this, it will never get better. You will never heal. There is nothing after this loss. And this is absolutely false, even if it feels all too real in the moment. God does not abandon us. His love has the ability to heal and redeem our most broken situations. But the path through our grief can look nearly impossible. Maybe you're facing it right now. Faith will take you through the valley of the shadow of death, and rest assured God's goodness and unfailing love will pursue you all of your days. And when you follow the Lord, He renews your strength and restores your peace. Have you ever had a dream that just ended? Experienced a difficult loss? There is an amount of heartbreak and grieving that comes with the end of a hope and the thoughts of what could have been. This was the case for Samuel. When we open the Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 16, we find him mourning the spiritual loss of Saul, as if the first king of Israel had actually died. Saul had turned away from God, and Samuel knew all too well that disobedience brought destruction and death. And so he cried out to God with a broken heart for what this would mean for Saul, what it would mean for God's people. But God was about to do what he does best, create light in the darkness, new life from death and decay, and breathe hope into a hopeless situation. Verse 1, Now the Lord said to Samuel, You have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. In life, we will experience periods of deep mourning. And there will be a time for us to process grief, but ultimately, we need to understand that is not where God desires for us to stay. Loss can threaten to swallow us whole, but Jesus wants us to look up take his hand and allow him to lead us through our grieving period. If you're going through a process like this right now, I want you to know this is not where God wants you to stay for the rest of your life. Life will not be the same as it was, but the Lord desires to create something new and beautiful in your life, to move powerfully within and through you. And just as the Lord offers that to you and I, so he offered it to Samuel. 
God was ready to work in him and through him. He was ready to use Samuel to anoint a new king and restore one man's personal hope as well as an entire nation. The great thing about our Lord and Savior is that he is so powerful that it's enough to change the whole entire world and yet also personal enough to change your life. God was calling Samuel to wipe away his tears, open his heart to hope again, fill his flask with anointing oil, and go to Bethlehem. God continues his instructions. Find a man named Jesse who lives there. I have selected one of his sons to be my king. But Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. God was asking Samuel to literally pass Saul by, go through the neighborhood of the king in order to reach a group of shepherds in the town of Bethlehem. The unbalanced, emotional, and violent state of the king was already really well known. And God was asking Samuel to commit an earthly act of treason for a heavenly purpose. He would have to walk through the threat of death to see new life breathed into a desperate and awful situation. The process that God provides to overcome grief and disappointment doesn't always look like we think it should, but it provides a crucial opportunity to examine ourselves and determine. Where does our hope really come from? It moves us from a place of what can I do to what the Lord will do. God is telling Samuel, if you trust me with your life, I will save it. Not only that, I will establish a new kingdom through which everyone can be blessed. God loves you more than any of us can truly comprehend. And the truth that we can hold tightly to is this. When we seek him, we find him. When we place our lives in the Lord's hands, there we find healing, hope, redemption, restoration, and salvation. We have to be willing to give Jesus our whole lives for him to save them. To trust Christ more than ourselves and our circumstances. That type of faith invites the Holy Spirit to move powerfully within us and through us. And it's in those moments that we see the miraculous work of God. And that's what we see in and through Samuel. God made a way where there was no way. But Samuel had to move in faith, wipe away the tears, fill his flask with the oil to do the Lord's work, and walk through difficult and dangerous territory to see it. And it took him to an unlikely place and an unlikely person, a shepherd boy in Bethlehem. The Bible says, so Samuel did as the Lord instructed. When we step outside of our circumstances into our identity as a child of God, we see the miraculous work of our loving Heavenly Father doing what we cannot. That's what it took for my wife and I. When we trusted God to open that nursery door once again to believe that he had created us to be parents to let go of our pain and embrace the calling of Christ, he did more than we could ever think or ask. Today, we have three beautiful children. And that once empty room is now full of life, laughter, and family. Each day with them is a tremendous gift from our Heavenly Father. But it was only made possible by listening to Jesus, following His commands, and having faith that He would lead us through the darkness of our grief into the light of hope and healing for a brand new day. My prayer for you is that you would experience that in your life. No, it won't be easy. It won't look simple either. But I can promise you, There is no one better to place your faith in and hope in than Jesus Christ. He is the author and perfecter of your faith, and he is not done telling your story. Place your trust in him. Wipe away your tears. Prepare yourself and move forward. Surrender your pain at his feet 
and embrace the Savior. The best is yet to come. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. Now is a great time to explore God's Word yourself by reading 1 Samuel chapter 16 on your own. If you need a Bible, just tap on the link in the Honestly Radio Instagram or Facebook page. We have free resources for you, as well as ways to connect and download the podcast for free. I want to encourage you to seek God daily through prayer, the Bible, and through attendance and service at a local church. Allow Christ to begin building your faith. Thank you for joining us on Honestly Radio. Remember, live honestly, be blessed. We'll see you next time.